Hi, this is Dr. Ryan with another episode of how you can really learn how to tame uh, your depression and anxiety using language. And that's really one of the things that we can do. And really this has worked quite well uh, with so many of my clients. And I just want to review the cognitive model or as we see it. Uh, so there is a situation that happens out there. You have a thought, you see an event, somebody says something to you. Uh, and there, there is already, it begins a cascade of thinking that really begins to escalate in your brain as that is happening. And that then leads to emotion. It leads to a feeling that occurs as a result of that thought. And so then uh, what happens is that there's, generally speaking, some kind of action that takes place after that. Either you may want to move away from that person, you, want to, uh, you may want to uh, uh, respond back to that person in a very emphatic way. And again, all of that can escalate your emotional states up to a level which really is probably not good for your body. Because if we go back and look at uh, the, the what is irrational thinking according to Dr. Ellis, it distorts our reality, it is illogical, and the vast majority of people think they're very logical about what they think until they begin to look at exactly how their beliefs are really developing. Uh, it prevents you from reaching your goals very often. It leads to unhealthy emotional states, and it leads to self-defeating behavior. So I also uh, have included a rating intensity state in which I can tell you how these things sort of get ramped up emotionally. So you may start out feeling calm or thinking being in a calm state, and then you may move to being a little annoyed, and then you may be beginning to be even more ramped up emotionally, and then there may be increasing levels of intensity about your feeling states until you get to high levels of unhealthy toxic emotions. And the ones that I really focus on with my clients because I've found them to be the most effective is working with the feeling states of mad, sad, and scared. Okay, this happens to be one example uh, of a sort of a generic kind of, of trigger event that seems to be happening today given our situation with the pandemic. Uh, so I started out with here, the activating event or the trigger is I have to do all my school work online now. Okay? So we start out with, remember that we go from calm to a little annoyed or a little sad or whatever, one of the feeling states. But we go into the rational belief saying to ourselves, I don't like doing this school work alone in my room. I wish I could get back to school with my friends. It's too bad this is so different and difficult for me because it's such a change. But what happens is that, again, when we begin to have a feeling of very sad, it isn't just because of these rational self-statements. It's because we move into a much higher level of, of evaluations and self-statements. Like, I shouldn't have to do this. It's awful that this is happening that I can't stand online classes and they suck. Now, we could also use a feeling state of very mad and avoid doing my classroom work or we could, uh, they could wind up feeling very sad because actually these things are very similar and can generate very different, uh, different feelings but they still get into high levels. So again, REBT, the difference between REBT and other kinds of, of tools um, is this disputation process. You know, we, we have to learn how to talk ourselves out of some of these really high levels of toxic feeling states. And we can do that. And so we need to use much more, as Ellis would say, moving from the demand that things be different and different than they are to a preference. You know, it's disappointing that this is such a big change for me. Uh, I can stand doing this classroom work this way. I don't have to like it. Because we really need to start telling ourselves something more neutral so that we can reduce some of that toxic level of emotion. So that the feeling then, hopefully, if we're disputing and developing rational alternative statements, then we can move into a less sad uh, state and maybe resign, res re, uh, resign myself to doing my schoolwork. So you have to talk to yourself differently in order to get a different result. And so that's what this kind of thing can do. Now, 
This is not the only kind of statement that people are making to themselves, but I'm going back to a very basic level so that we can start from that point because actually when you start having these, uh, re recognizing that you're thinking this way, you're going to go on and think more rational alternative statements and you're going to go on thinking more irrational uh, self-statements uh, that I should be able to, uh, to do this work without any difficulty. Well, really? You know, basically, remember we talked about that research that said that that, that should is a criticism of oneself for not being the way they think they ought to be. So again, we're using the kind of verbiage that's keeping us in turmoil. It's keeping us uh, in continuing to main, maintain our irrational state until we run out of sentences to say to ourselves. But sometimes it takes a while. It's not a fast fix. But it's really worthwhile. So you can do these things over and over and over again and really learn how to talk to yourself differently so that you don't get there. So sometimes it's really important just to get to a more neutral place with something that you don't like. Uh, human beings don't like adversity. We don't want things to change for us. Uh, and so basically we are going to uh, resist that. Uh, and so the adversity is something that we have to learn how to manage because it isn't going to change out there. Things are going to be difficult. People are going to say things to you you don't like. And you need to have uh, a way to manage yourself around that kind of adversity. Because adversity, one of, one of the things that was in one of my uh, psychology uh, chairman's uh, room was a sign that said, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. So basically, let's see if we can work out uh, a way to stop getting into this suffering uh, situation with these high level of toxic feelings. Okay, this is another one that is very common. Uh, just about everybody probably has been there. So we're going to go through this one. Uh, the trigger in this particular event was that my boss yelled at me and threatened to fire me. So what people will come up with is that the, the next feeling state that they probably experience is fear. Uh, that they're going to, that they're going to fire me on the spot. And then what am I going to do? So it leads to a whole cascade of all kinds of irrational thinking. But what we want to do is still go through that from the rational point, point of view to the irrational point of view to the disputation so that we can see how to reduce the level of that kind of fear state. Because that really leads very often to a real tough panicky state um, and what people will call anxiety. So we want to stem that tide to some extent. Okay, so starting with this, let's go to this feeling of fear. Let's go to the irrational belief statements first instead of going to the rational belief statements. Uh, I shouldn't be yelled at or threatened. It's awful that this happened to me. I can't stand being, uh, being confronted uh, by a, the possibility of, a, of being fired. I can't stand being confronted with the thought of losing my job. And that leads to a whole host of other cascades of fearful self-statements of what am I going to do? Am I going to lose my house? Am I going to lose my apartment? Uh, how am I going to feed myself? Where am I going to go? So again, this then really, and that's a continual maintenance of this high level of fear. I really must have messed up to have this happen to me. So that feeling of fear will come out of all of those, uh, all of those self-statements. Okay, so again, we go back to these are kind of the normal events that happen and flow. I don't like it that my boss yells at me or I don't like the idea that I might be fired. Uh, I wish that, <clears throat> that I knew exactly uh, what he or she was so angry with me about. Uh, it's too bad that, uh, that I can't figure this out easily to find out what the problem is. And those are just um, a few of the rational self-statements that we can generate uh, based on this trigger. And the same thing has to go along with the irrational belief statements. They then escalate and go on and on. And basically, we are, our brain is a ruminating uh, organ. It really likes to go on and on and on. 
So that feeling of fear then stays, fear of losing the job, fear of losing their house, fear of losing their livelihood, so that it's really tough. So we have to learn how, again, this is adversity, how can we manage ourselves in the face of this kind of adversity? Well, we really can learn how to reduce the level of our fear um, and that we want to bring that fear down to uh, concern, you know, concerned about what's going to happen instead of immediately going to the worst case hypothesis. Okay, so we can start saying to ourselves, it's really disappointing that I'm not really sure what was, what was happening and why my boss was so angry with me. I can stand being yelled at because the reality is, is that after you're yelled at, you're still there so that you can stand it. Uh, and you don't have to like it that your boss may get so upset with you. Uh, that those are all developing rational alternative self-statements. So these are the kinds of things that you can use to begin to sort out and analyze your own reactions and overreactions to things so that you can start managing, again, what I'm saying, as I said before in one of my previous sessions, that we want to learn how to tame this depression by learning how to talk ourselves down from high levels of toxic, unhealthy emotional feeling states. Yeah, and this is just one way in which you can begin to start that process and do this for yourself and start handling your own thoughts and feelings in a way which are much more comfortable. In my next episode, I want to go over another highly toxic feeling state that people often have a difficult time managing. We've already dealt with a high level of fear, high level of sadness, but my next episode is really going to cover how we get ourselves into really high levels of anger in which we start thinking that we are out of control. I hypothesize that we are not out of control. We're controlling that up. And if we are controlling that up by the way we're talking to ourselves, then we can control that down. So tune in for the next time and we'll go over that.